Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're here to talk about chapter 3, or subject CT5, and this chapter is called the life table. And if we just zoom out quickly, we can see that these are the seven um, formulas that we need to know and understand from this chapter. But don't worry, um, we're going to go through each one step by step so that you understand it really nicely. The first one is this little guy here. And it's looking at the relationship between survival probabilities. What it's basically saying is the probability of someone surviving from let's say age 10 until they are 16 is equal to the probability that someone is age 10 survives to the age 15 and then from 15 survives to you know the age 16. So what we can see is survival probabilities can be broken up um, this way. So yeah, it's not that difficult. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Um, let's talk about one of the life table functions, which is Lx, and it is the expected number of lives who survive to age X. Oh yeah, just remember you can pause the video at any time and read my additional notes written in the white over here. Um, so yeah, that's Lx. So now let's look at how the survival probabilities and life table functions relate to each other. So this is what we have. The probability that someone aged X survives for T years is equal to the amount of people you know, who are at age X um, as your denominator and as your numerator, the amount of people who have survived to the later year. So I've actually got this little example here to make it much better. Let's say there are 10 people or 10 creatures that are one years of age, seven creatures that are two years of age, five creatures that are three years of age. Okay, the probability that a creature aged one lives for another two years is equal to the number of creatures alive at year three, which is five, divided by the initial amount that started out, which is 10, and that gives us our 50%. So that's what Alex is. And that's how it relates to the survival probabilities. We have another life table function um, known as dx. And this is the amount of people who die um, between the ages of x and x plus 1. Now, this can be calculated by subtracting um, you know, the amount of people who are alive at this age by the amount of people in the following age. So, for example, d, d2 would have been 3 and d3 would have been 2 if we use these values over here. Okay, now this one gets a little bit tricky. Um, we're going to go an, a life that is aged X that is going to die um, before the age M, but it must survive uh, N years first. So I've actually got this here. So basically it's dying, Someone, the probability that someone is dying between X plus N and X plus N plus M. Okay. Um, a simple way to, or how I got to this formula, was I broke up the Q function into its P functions and then broke up the P functions and the simplified Q function into L functions and you'll see that some terms cancel out to give you this formula over here. So you can see that these life table functions are they're quite cool, you can use them or manipulate them to come up with a whole bunch of the probability um, probabilities that we need in our calculations. And just in case you're wondering, um, Lx and, and Dx and all of this are, in tabulate, are tabulated in that orange book which you should have bought if you are serious about your passing these exams because you really do need the life tables um, for practice and questions and all of that. Anyway, moving on. If we look at the probability distribution of Kx, uh, remember Kx from subject CT4 is your could take future lifetime. Um, this guy is just going to be equal to K deferred Qx. So the probability that someone aged x, um, let's say the probability, yeah, someone aged x lives for five years is equal to um, Qx, that they die within one year, deferred by five years. Um, but that can be very nicely represented by the life table functions of dx plus k over Lx. Okay, um, 
this this is the big one that I wanted to talk about the uniform distribution of death quite tricky um, we're gonna do it a little bit slowly so hopefully you guys follow along this is a little bit tricky okay basically um, uniform distribution of death it is an assumption about mortality and don't worry about this mathematical stuff here um, you know if it's confusing you just understand that uniform distribution of death means you are just as likely to die um, in January than you are to die in September you know so it's basically saying that you have an equal chance of dying on any day of the year now this does do something strange to the force of mortality um, maybe pause the video and think about what this assumption would do to the force of mortality I will tell you on later in the video but it's something cool to think about but now why do we make this assumption because assumptions simplify things they aren't necessarily accurate um, but they do make thinking about the mathematics much more simpler so why do we have this assumption essentially it gives us these two formulas or approximations okay and what these guys are is that it's letting us handle non-integer time periods so before we could calculate oh someone aged five um, what's the probability that they die before age seven okay now we've got something else what if someone aged five dies within half a year how do we handle that the first formula is quite easy or, or simple to understand um, and that is saying that the probability that someone dies um, yeah someone dies within a fraction of the year is equal to the probability that they died within that year times that fraction okay that's simple but number two is a little bit more trickier so let's actually tackle an example um, to make this more yeah make it more simple sorry yeah this is quite difficult guys okay so let's let's look um, don't worry about all the writing on the side maybe let's just yeah let's just zoom in let's just zoom in over here for a second okay okay now that actually looks weird if I zoom in okay focus over here okay what is this saying okay this is saying that the probability that someone aged 80 dies within a quarter of the year is equal to the probability that someone dies um, within a year when they're 80 multiplied by a quarter Okay, and that, that kind of makes that kind of makes sense. I mean, um, you know, if you're going to die this year and you've got a 10% chance of dying, the probability that you die in the first part of the year or the first quarter of the year is going to be 2.5%. That's quite simple. But now this is where it gets interesting because these guys are not equal. You know, they've got different ages. What this is saying is someone who's aged 80 and a half the probability of them dying within a quarter of a year okay so basically it's saying that someone who's aged 80.5 dies before 80.75 okay now this is equal to the probability that someone aged 80 dies multiplied by 0 0.25 which is what we see there however it is divided by the probability that the person survives half a year that's what that shows over there now just do a quick little little thought um, what's going to be bigger this this probability or this probability okay and if you think it through this probability is going to be greater okay slightly but it's going to be greater because this is saying that someone who's older in life is more likely to die you know we we know that Someone, uh, you have a higher chance of dying when you're 80 within a year than if you are 30, okay? And this assumption is saying that someone who, who's at 80.5 has a little bit higher chance of dying at 80, given that the time periods are the same, okay? And that change is given over here, okay? So we're going, this is almost a little bit of conditional probability. Like I said, it's quite difficult um, I have drawn this little diagram to show, okay? This 
value over here is represented by the orange period here. Okay, 80.5 to 80.75. Okay, this value over here is represented in red. You know, someone who's 80 and um, you know dying within a quarter. But to get to that, you have to push it forward. You know, by the survival thing. So the person first survives, and then they die. And so yeah, that's why you're going to take the red value, divide it by the green value, and it's going to give you the orange value. And um, yeah, maybe pause, take a screenshot, read this through. This is very difficult, so don't worry if you are confused. Um, do some more examples and you'll get the hang of it. Um, but don't be lazy and just learn that formula. Understand this, so go through it yourself. But yeah, it is very difficult. Okay, something that's much simpler is the constant force of mortality. Okay, with the uniform distribution of death, okay, the fact that we said the 80.5 year olds got a higher chance of dying than the 80 year old implies that the force of mortality is increasing over this interval of time. Okay, we make it much more simpler by just assuming a constant force of mortality. Okay, this says that your chance of dying um, today is the same, well, yeah, your chance of dying today is the same of you dying um, tomorrow. It's got the same force as long as you're within this year. Quite a, I mean, it's, it's nice to think about the, the difference between the two assumptions and their effects on everything. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that because, yeah, it will take a lot of time. And it's not something I'm entirely sure about, so we'd have to, you know, something to think about and discuss. But anyway, uh, for the course, constant force of mortality, um, this applies to your TPX, your survival guys, because you'll see that was that definition that we gave in the earlier chapter. If we make um, mu, or the force of mortality, constant, we get simply e to the force times t, and that little guy over there is actually the probability guy, so we get PXT. When we now have in, um, you know, non-integers on either side of the P, it's very easy to handle. You just put the little guys at the bottom there. That becomes constant. Subtract those two, and you get this guy over here. And now, look for something much uh, simpler. So let's say um, we're talking about the old people again, you know, aged 80. Probability that they survive um, for a quarter of the year is going to be the same whether they're at age 80.5 or at age 80. So here the age things don't matter because the force of mortality is constant. Okay, constant force of mortality. You can check out my little diagram and you can read that as well to maybe help you with the whole you know, uniform distribution of death against this. Okay. We're almost done with this chapter. It is quite a, quite a bit of a tricky one, but we end on something that's quite simple, and this is something known as select mortality rates. Um, essentially, a select mortality is something that depends on age and a duration. Now, the duration is normally after a medical. So when you want to buy life insurance, um, normally, or well, in the first world, you would go to your doctor and he would say, okay, this person's healthy, we can insure them. And therefore, this mortality, the select mortality, will be lower than what we call the ultimate mortality, which didn't undergo this doctor's um, thing. Because if you were unhealthy, then the doctor's going to reject you. If you are healthy, then the doctor will recommend you for life insurance. Um, but now what's interesting is that there's something known as the select period. And that what this says is that after, like, say, five years, your mortality... Um, is no longer special or different to ultimate mortality, it, it almost blends back into the ultimate mortality. So if I'm 20 and the doctor says I'm super healthy, then my mortality is less than the average 20-year-old. However, in five years' time, if five is the duration period, then what we are saying is that my mortality will be exactly the same as the ultimate mortality or the average mortality of the people. And yeah, in a sense, that's basically it. Um, you then get, you know, the select mortality shown by drawing square brackets around the age. 
and like you see if n is greater than s then lxn plus n is equal to the ultimate and yeah that is basically it um, I mean these are the the seven the seven formulas you want to look into um, don't just remember them I mean go in understand them and give it your best this is a little bit tricky so do think about it don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it right away but yeah thank you very much guys